Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how the Ableton project and the Unreal project kind of communicate with each other. So in the Ableton project you will find three kind of devices. Um, they all send data and in Unreal you'll find a couple of blueprints or objects um, that yeah, receive these data and do stuff with them. But they do kind of follow, uh, um, yeah, a certain set of rules. So um, the three devices are um, one that sends MIDI notes, one that sends, yeah, the envelope of the audio track it's placed on, and one third device sends macro sliders across. So let's have a look at the device that sends MIDI notes. You can find one here in the kick MIDI track. So there is a bunch of MIDI clips and on the track there is this device that sends MIDI notes through. So if I hit play yeah it is sending MIDI node 36 through on track address 1. So each device has a track address menu and you can select um, yeah a number. This is basically the group it belongs to and in Unreal you have a couple of blueprints like this one this morphing um, particle ball thingy this particle ball listens to two different MIDI sender devices, right? So it listens to a kick MIDI device and it listens to a snare MIDI device. And yeah, the way to uh, uh, differentiate between these two devices is by these track address numbers. So the kick yeah, the, the kick MIDI sender is set to track address 1. We know this. So in the blueprint, you have a couple of settings. And under OSC params, you can find a kick MIDI track address number. So make sure they are the same number and they will listen to each other. They will find each other and yeah, they can communicate with each other if they are on the same number. So this number is kind of, yeah, relevant. If this number were to be 13 or something, let's say you have uh, a kick track or something else, uh, um, I don't know, a bass line or something that sends MIDI on track 13 or whatever, all the way in the back, um, you just set your track address to yeah, your own number and make sure that you fill in the number in the blueprint as well. So I'm going to set it back to one, set this back to one. Cool. Now, just to demonstrate, the snare track also has its own device and it is set to 2. So this device is set to 1, this device is set to 2. Here in the blueprint, the snare MIDI track address is set to 2. It's pretty simple, but it is, uh, um, yeah, all the blueprints and all the Max for Life devices use these, um, yeah, use these track address numbers to, yeah, to communicate with each other and to make sure you are sending uh, data through to the right place. Right. Let's see. Um, there's also an audio envelope sender, which looks pretty much the same that's because, yeah, it, it, it works with this track address number as well. 
and it has a release in time just to give it a little bit of a slope and yeah but it's the same idea so um, one of the blueprints that listens to an audio envelope instead of a MIDI note is this one so this is BPSH random position and in the OSC parameters you can find an envelope track address and this is set to 4 so we know it's not this one because this is set to 3 but I think it listens to our break audio track that has the track address 4 let's play it just to be safe also, I like this break. And let's just play just a break. Bam! That works. Yeah, the same goes with the. Uh, yeah, the stabs, the samples, they send MIDI through, right? And they send MIDI through on track address 5. And these blocks here, they listen to, um, yeah, a track address. Let's have a look here. So they listen to a MIDI, they are assigned a MIDI track address, right? They all listen to 5, but... These are kind of special because they listen to a track address and specific mini notes as well. So in the blocks underneath mini track address, you can find an array that's called mini trigger notes. So you can, yeah, add a bunch of notes that you want this to trigger on, if that makes sense. So it always listens to MIDI track address 5, but it only triggers if it receives these certain notes that you feel in, in this array. So this block is listening uh, yeah, to MIDI note 47. This block is listening to MIDI note 49. And this block is listening to MIDI note 48. So if I play this. Let's grab a MIDI step here. You can see with the, uh, yeah, with the printed messages, uh, which node is playing at what time. And you could also see that the blocks were reacting to that exact notes that you filled in earlier. And uh, yeah, last but not least, we have the macro sender with eight sliders, and you can map these sliders to yeah to these macro dials. These macro dials you can also map to other effects like this um, this low pass filter, right? The macro sender has a track address and a macro slider number and the value that is attached to that number to that slider right so in our scene we have one macro light switch blueprint that listens to two numbers so the macro track address in this case 16 uh, yeah we Tristan just put it at 16 because it's the master. It's, it's kind of all the way at the end anyway. And it listens to, well, this blueprint listens to micro slider number one. And in this case, it's controlling all the ambient lights, so uh, skylight and uh, whatever light 
we can fiddle around with it so you can see the sun kind of dimming out or turn back on all with the macro dial and yeah that's um that's kind of how these devices communicate with certain blueprints by using track address numbers and by specifying uh, yeah, either micro slider numbers or MIDI notes in some cases. You definitely just yeah check the blueprint, go to your OSC params and have a look at what they need, what they expect. So in this case, it wants a MIDI, it wants two MIDI track addresses. So yeah, that kind of makes sense because it needs two MIDI sender devices to work. This blueprint only has, yeah, one track address, so it works with one MIDI device, but it also works with MIDI trigger nuts. So definitely have a look uh, in the OSC parameters, uh, uh, see if it makes sense, and um, yeah, that's how you use it. That's how you communicate between the two, all right? That's it. Bye, y'all. Uh.